everyone, this is Emily, and today we are going to talk about how a snake's senses compare to ours. The five senses that we as humans have and that we're going to cover in today's video are sight, touch, hearing, taste, and smell. Let's start with the sense of sight. In snakes, this sense isn't as developed as it is in humans, but many arboreal or tree-dwelling snakes, such as green tree pythons, they typically have larger eyes and better stereoscopic vision or depth perception. The reason for this is because arboreal snakes spend the majority of their life up in trees. That's what it means to be arboreal. And therefore, they eat a lot of birds. So they need to be able to have that 3D or depth perception in order to see where a bird is flying by. That isn't to say all arboreal Arboreal snakes eat birds, but it does explain why a lot of arboreal snakes have better stereoscopic vision. In the case of green tree pythons, they eat a lot of rodents in the wild. So when they're hungry, they'll go down to the lower branches of a shrub or a bush, or even the lower branches of a small tree, and they will strike rodents from above while still in those branches. So they don't want to smash their faces against the ground, so they really need that 3D vision. The complexity of a snake's sight is also influenced by whether they are diurnal or nocturnal. Nocturnal species of snakes, again like green tree pythons, typically have vertically oriented pupils. Most of the time we see nocturnal species of snakes in the light, so their pupils are contracted and just look like small slits. It's very similar to like your pet cat's eyes or their pupils contract and dilate in various lighting conditions. The reason behind this is because vertically shaped pupils allow a nocturnal snake to see more at night by opening up, but during the daylight those pupils can kind of close up shop and prevent too much light from entering the eye. On the flip side, snakes that are most active during daylight hours, which are diurnal snakes, have round pupils. This allows diurnal species of snakes to better control the amount of light entering their eye during daylight hours. For nocturnal animals with their vertically shaped pupils, that doesn't really matter because they're not active during the daylight hours anyway. And the shape of a snake's pupils will help them find their prey, avoid predators, as well as thermoregulate during the time of day that they are most active. So that covers the different shapes of pupils snakes have, and therefore how much light their eyes allow in at diff different parts of the day, but what about color? Humans during the daylight hours are trichromatic, meaning that we can sense or see the three primary colors, red, green, and blue. Uh, I know in like art school or art class, you're, we're all taught that red, blue, and yellow are the primary colors, but humans only have cone cells for the colors green, blue, and red, so those are our primary colors that we see with. That also means we can see the colors that are created by combining those three primary colors, like purple. At night, humans are monochromatic, meaning we can only sense one color, which is black or white depending on how you look at it. Basically, we see things as grayscale at night. With snakes, on the other hand, research strongly suggests that during daylight hours, they are dichromatic, meaning that they can see two different colors. They have cone cells for both blue and green, and therefore they can see any colors that come from the combination of blue and green. So they can't see purples? Guess not. They can't Weird. see red. They can't see red. That's I crazy. mean, you don't often see red in snakes. We've got yeah. blue and green right here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. At nighttime, however, it appears as though snakes are just like us and that they are also monochromatic, or they see the world around them as grayscale at night. So although a snake's eyes may not be as well developed as a human's, many species of snakes can also see it using pit organs too. This applies to many boas, pythons, and pit vipers. It doesn't apply to all of them, but many species of snakes contain pit organs, which allow them to sense the heat of their surroundings. This sense of heat vision is so good in snakes that they can not only see the heat of their surroundings at night, you can completely blindfold them, and the species that have pit organs can still strike their prey within five degrees of either side. So they have extremely good accuracy just using their pit organs, the species that have them anyway. We actually have a video all about how pit organs work, and I'll put a link to it right here in case you want to learn more. Before we move on to the next sense, this is our sarong green tree python. He doesn't have a name yet, but he is a beautiful little green tree. Yeah, he's also super patient with us and very friendly for a green tree. Like, it is 7.40 at night and his light has been out for about 45 minutes and he still let us take him out. You're a good boy. Yeah. He's not happy with us. <laughs> but he tolerates but us. But he tolerates us. <laughs> 
Next, let's move on to the sense of touch. You might be inclined to believe that an animal covered in thick or armorous scales would have a very poor sense of touch, but it's actually a lot better than you'd think. If you think about it, an animal that spends the majority of its life on its belly should probably have a good sense of touch. A snake's body is covered in tactile receptors that help it respond to stimuli in its environment. The sense of touch is also used as a form of communication with some species. For example, adult male bull snakes will actually wrestle one another to assert dominance. Whichever male comes out as the dominant one in the end gets breeding rights with a female. And speaking of male bull snakes, this is our patternless hypo bull snake. He's not an adult quite yet, he's getting there, we're raising him up for a future breeding project, but he sure is gorgeous. Snakes also need a good sense of touch in order to catch and subdue their prey. For species that constrict their prey to kill it, they have to be able to feel when their prey is, in fact, dead before they can start eating it. In order to achieve this, snakes have actually a well-developed enough sense of touch to be able to sense the heartbeat of their prey item. So overall, their sense of touch is a lot better than you would originally think. We've been able to see a snake's sense of touch firsthand and how sensitive they can be when we remove a clutch of eggs from, say, our big female bull snake, and she feels our fingers touching her body when we're actually just trying to remove those eggs, she pushes us away because she doesn't realize we're just there to grab her eggs, she doesn't care about the eggs, she just doesn't want us touching her, so she tries to push. And in our experience, I don't know if there's any, like, scientific evidence to prove this, but it appears as though a snake's tail is the most sensitive to touch. That's why if you're helping a snake cross the road, if you just kind of tap their tail with a stick, they usually skitter on forward and move out of the way. So either most sensitive or most vulnerable, one of the two. One but... of the two. <laughs> a snake of ours that has a particularly good sense of touch would be our Brazilian rainbow boa, Mad no -eyed Moody. He was born without eyes, so he relies on his other senses to help navigate in his enclosure and find and constrict food, and we suspect he also relies a lot more than he normally would on his senses of smell and hearing. So let's move on to hearing. Even though snakes don't have external ears, their sense of hearing is actually, again, better than you might think because they do possess internal ears. These inner ears, along with their jaw bones, allow them to sense vibrations around themselves as well as hear a limited range of sounds. I mean, again, if you think about it, snakes usually spend a lot of the time on the ground or on the surface of like a tree branch that they are sitting on and their head is near that surface too or their head is near the ground, so those jaw bones pick up a lot of nearby vibrations. We have kind of a an interesting experience with this snake and his sense of hearing. When we first got him, he wasn't eating very well at all, which is understandable given his disability. But then, as we started taking care of him and opening the drawer and offering food almost every time we opened the drawer, he started associating the movement of his drawer, I think, with there being food. So he started eating very well once he learned the schedule, to the point where he associated our hands with being food too, and anything that touched his face was food. So then what we did was, about four months ago, we started using this dog clicker, which that audio was inserted manually because I'm not going to click it right now because I don't want him to get into food mode. But whenever we feed him, we actually click this dog clicker and we're thinking he's starting to associate the vibrations he picks up from this noise with there being food nearby. So it does seem to help because he's he's not eating me right now and that's that's a great step in the right direction. So yeah, they, they can hear even though they don't have external ears. Next, let's talk about the sense of taste. Snakes don't have any true sense of taste. One for the humans. But what they lack in sense of taste, snakes definitely make up for in their sense of smell, which is the final sense in today's video. This is our African egg-eating snake, Traveler, and when you think of the sense of smell, you often associate that with our noses, right? Well, snakes can slightly smell with their noses, but they really just rely on their nostrils for breathing purposes. Instead, as many of you probably already know, snakes rely on their tongue for their sense of smell, and it is incredible. Snakes possess something called a vomeronasal cavity, or vomeronasal organ. It's also known as a Jacobson's organ. This organ is located in the nasal cavity. So in the roof of a snake's mouth, there are two slits, one for each fork of their tongue. When a snake sticks its tongue out and flicks it around, the tips of its tongue are actually picking up scent particles from the air or from the surface that it's flicking its tongue on. Then, when the forks go into the mouth, they actually slide up into those slits, where the scent particles are then deposited, and the Jacobson's organ organ or vomeronasal cavity picks up those scent particles and then kind of calculates what smell they are experiencing. 
Having a forked tongue allows a snake to smell in two different directions at once, which helps them not only find their prey, but also detect predators nearby. Snakes are also able to pick up on pheromones and scent trails and more. For timber rattlesnakes, they're able to pick up the scent trails of their mothers, which then lead them to their hibernaculum over the winter. For snakes like egg-eating snakes, their sense of smell is so keen that these, I mean, th this species of snake, in case you don't already know, they only eat eggs, and they can't eat eggs that are already developed because what they do is they swallow an egg whole, they push it to about here, where they have very strong muscles that crack the egg open using some projections from their spine, they drink all of the liquid inside of the egg, and they spit out the shell. So an egg-eating snake can't very easily drink a baby bird in an egg, so they can only eat freshly laid eggs. That means their sense of smell has to be so good that with a flick of their tongue, they have to be able to tell if that egg has a baby bird inside of it or is mostly just liquid based and therefore they can eat it. They're also able to tell if an egg is rotten because obviously they can't eat a rotten egg. One of the great benefits to smelling with your tongue means that they don't have to breathe while they smell like humans do for smelling with their noses. So snakes, unlike humans, can smell underwater. The Jacobson's organ is found in not just snakes, but all lizards as well, and many mammals. It's actually debatable whether humans have a Jacobson's organ. Some scientists speculate that we do, some say that we don't, some think that we used to, but the associated cells that we have now, or receptors, are just vestigial, meaning that they we've kind of evolved out of having one. Other scientists think that we do have them while we're developing in the womb, but by the time we're born, we don't have a Jacobson's organ. Other scientists think that, yes, we do still have it after we're born, and it's just been misidentified this whole time as something else. So there's a lot of debate still up in the air. It seems like general consensus, though, is we do not have a Jacobson's organ. Regardless, if we have one, I don't feel any slits in the roof of my mouth, so... Cats do have a Jacobson's organ though. So if you have a cat at home and you see it like uh, behind a glass window looking at a squirrel or a bird on the other side and it's doing that like kind of tongue out panty thing, it's actually trying to breathe in the scent particles to hit its Jacobson's organ so that it can better smell or detect the animal on the other side of the glass. I've also heard when a cat's licking its butt and it comes up and it's got that weird look on its face, <laughs> That's also using its uh, Jacobson's organ. I mean, it probably is. I was going to use the second example of when horses raise their lips, they're trying to smell using their Jacobson's organ, but cat sniffing butt theory or example also works in this video, I suppose. Thank you, Ed. <laughs> That actually wraps up our video. That was the last thing we're gonna talk about is the cat sniffing its butt. Hooray! Uh, anyway, there's still so much more we have to learn as far as snake senses go compared to humans or just how snake senses work in general. And that's one of the most exciting things about the reptile world, I think, and why I still love keeping them to this day is because I'm always learning something new. Let us know in the comments below if you learned something new today. I learned that snakes only have blue cone cells and green cone cells. I thought that was kind of cool. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Thank you as always to our amazing Patreon backers for your wonderful support on this channel. I will put my works cited or all my references in the description below in case anybody wants to learn more. And again, we have a video all about pit organs in case you want to learn how those work in snakes. Thank you again, everybody, for watching, and we'll see you next time. How a snake's senses compare to ours. That'll work. Yep. The squawk in the background and everything. <laughs> Sorry my hands are all painty. I bet you can't guess what color I was painting at the facility today. I think there's a color and there's a color. Yeah, there's a few colors, I, I guess. I was painting a different color. <laughs> Jeez, you were. Those that are most active during the daylight hours typically have round-shaped pupils. Round-shaped? Before we move on to the next sense, this is our biak biak. Sorry, Sarong. Sarong. A snake's body is covered in tactile... Uh, a snake's body is covered... Uh, tactile receptors. A snake's body is covered in tech tact. Do you think his other senses are greater? Because he doesn't have the sense of sight like in humans? Like when you lose your sense of sight, yeah. your other senses get better? I think they're probably heightened because of his lack of eyes. Hmm. I could be wrong, but... Yeah, I that's... guess there's really no way to prove it. I don't so. know. <laughs>